This is Julian and I'm here in Cologne, Germany and what I want to ask you in this video here is do you ever feel like there's something just pulling you back in life? Pulling you back from your dreams, pulling you back from your goals. You might be trying to work out, get on top of your health and at some point you just fall off the wagon. You might be trying to get a new job or just jump at an opportunity when it comes to your career and right at the finish line you fumble or you see someone you want to say hi to, that ideal partner, and you just freeze. And it's like every time you're so close to the finish line, you just shoot yourself in the fucking foot. And you probably hate it. You're probably nodding at this video like, fuck, I know, man. It's like, there's just this invisible force pulling me back, this fucking self-sabotage. I fucking hate it. And what I'm gonna tell you here is bullshit. You love it. You love self-sabotage and here's why. Now what I'm going to tell you is probably going to shock you and that is that self-sabotage doesn't exist. Okay, in reality, you're getting exactly what you want in life except you're not aware of the part of you that wants that. Okay, and to explain this, let's rewind back to your childhood and the way that we're conditioned socially where you come into this world and you quickly have to get your bearings on life. You need to learn the rules, the traditions, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, and you start forming different core beliefs, different core assumptions, and more importantly, a core identity. Okay, where you look around as a kid, as you're growing up, and you see where you stand on the totem pole, let's just say. How much status you're allowed to have, what you deserve out of life, whether it's in terms of relationships, the different partner you deserve, where you stand in your group of friends, are you the main person, are you the second person, um, are you the funny person, or are you the person at the bottom where people don't really care, you know, or you might be the person with no friends in terms of money, how much money or success you're allowed to have, and how healthy you're allowed to be. You start looking around and you start making these assumptions and you form this core identity. And from this core identity, you start living your life. You start acting from it and you start building new beliefs and new assumptions on it. Okay, so these core beliefs, core assumptions, core identity, they're at the foundation of everything that you believe um, today, the way you see the world. Okay, and then here you are, grown up, trying to achieve your goals. And part of you consciously right now is, well, I want to make a lot of money. Who doesn't want to make billions? Everyone. But if it goes against that core identity, whether it's core assumptions or beliefs, you're not gonna make millions. That is always going to win because if you do say make millions and it goes against it, it means that this could be wrong and if the foundation is wrong, everything else is wrong. So a question here that you must ask yourself and it's a very useful question in order to identify what identity you've taken on is what movie character do you relate with? Who are you? For me personally, I've always identified with the more self-destructive artist characters. You know, whenever there's a movie, it's the person who kind of builds themselves up and at the end, they, they just go out in flames. That was me from a very young age. I remember playing toys with my younger sister and I'd always play those characters. When I watched movies, I was always like, oh, that's me. That person's so cool. And I found significance there. Now, guess what? Later on, I would keep self-sabotaging. I might try to be healthy and at some point I'd keep being pulled back. Why? Because if I'm too healthy, am I still self-destructive? No. Okay, so that's just one example. Who are you? Are you perhaps the hero of the movie? Or the hero where you might succeed but then you're destined to be alone? Are you the person who gets screwed over in the movie? Are you the person who's not very important? Are you the person who falls into the friend zone? Are you the martyr or the victim? Who are you? Okay, not who you want to be, who can you see yourself as? Who do you relate to? And from there, what you should ask yourself is what are the pros of being this character and what are the cons? And what you will see is how this plays out through your life. All of those moments or instances where you self-sabotage will most likely link back to this character and the pros and cons. Who are you? What character are you? Are you the person who is always, you know, gets fucked over? or the guy who's in the friend zone in all the movies, or um, the person who never makes it, or the, the, the funny little friend in the movies. Who are you? What character do you see yourself as? Not the character you want to be, who do you see yourself as? Yeah. James Bond. How so? For real, like, and I feel like that's one that, if you could kind of give your opinion on that. Oh yeah, James Bond is, <laughs> 
I made actually videos in the past with James Bond where you always have to ask yourself, like whatever character, like don't judge yourself for it. Ask yourself, what's the payoff of being this character? What do I get out of it? Make a list. And what's the cost of being this character? What are some of the downsides of being, say, James Bond? What do you guys think? Death. Danger. <laughs> it's real dark there. You're like, death. <laughs> All right, so there you go, like no deep or say long lasting connections. Okay, connect. my, my writing sucks. Um, <laughs> I could be a doctor. Here's one huge one. Um, can James Bond relax, loosen up, laugh? Be a little non-fancy, non-stifled, non-stiff? No, James Bond is always cool, always smooth. Mar you know, what is it, like martini? The martini in hand. And I see this when it comes to, say, socialization. These guys go up and they just can't relax. They can't fuck around because it goes against being James Bond. They can't put themselves in new situations where you might embarrass yourself, because if you embarrass yourself, are you James Bond? No. Fuck no! Does James Bond ever embarrass himself? No, James Bond's always cool. James Bond always has that smooth comeback. You might not want to put yourself in a situation where you might not have that smooth comeback. You might hold yourself at a very high standard. Does uh, James Bond ever have a wrinkle in his clothing? No. No matter how many explosions are around him, it's crisp. <laughs> so you might be quite perfectionist there. You might always want to dress well. You know, kind of walking on eggshells type of personality. So it's always asking yourself, like, hmm, interesting. And then you can see a lot of patterns, like if you're someone who just can't really laugh, if you're someone who's always playing it safe, because it goes with that character. Okay, what are some other ones? Yeah? The wimpy guy that always gets pulled up by the cool guy. That's it. I just realized that when you're talking. Nice. Uh, any specific character? Not really. I watch a lot of anime, so there's, that's fairly throughout the... Okay. Drugs. Well, there's one. You're the... Was it the wimpy guy? Is that he said? The wimpy guy that pulled up into coolness. Got That's it. By someone else, or are you still the main character no, there? By someone else. By someone else. By some external force pulling you out of your own, own main health, essentially. Got it. So, what could be some patterns there? It could be that. He was kind of like a geek, and then he turned into. But he wasn't really pulled back. Well, it could be in terms of just doing it yourself. You might be waiting for something to do it for you, waiting for that force. You can't. Yeah. It's quite, you're like, oh shit. And, and it explains a lot. And it's, part of you wants to keep that identity. You know, and, and this is big too. Like, when you've taken that identity on, usually this happens like during your upbringing, um, you start filtering everything that you are through it and you start acting from it, thus investing in it. Okay? And it's easy to be like, I realize it, I'm gonna change it, but it's scary as shit to drop it. Okay, the same with say different core beliefs. Um, if you've taken that identity, like me, the self-destructive artist, I took that on even as a fucking kid. You know, I remember playing um, toys with like my sister, and I was always like playing the, um, the like yeah, destructive kind of like bad guy character. That was my favorite character to play. <laughs> so weird. Um, now, say I identify as that. I'm like, okay, I'm the self-destructive artist, and I start acting from there, and I start building new assumptions, new beliefs. All that is on the self-destructive artist. Now I can tell myself, let's drop this shit. Fuck being self-destructive. But if this is gone, or say this is wrong, all this crumbles too. So it's really scary. Like, you don't know, for example, life outside of being the wimpy guy who gets pulled up. You have no bearings. You enter a new world, a new reality, a new paradigm. If you're James Bond, that's all you know. And you might hate it, but there's a lot of comfort in there, and it's scary as shit to drop it. There's a lot of resistance to dropping it, okay? What are some other characters? Get one more, maybe? Yeah. Can you talk about the character that we are, not that we want to be? Right? I mean, we that you are. Fun, we got Goku, but you're not necessarily there. And for me, I feel like I'm that character that gets a couple, you know, taste, some taste of the success, one or two here, and then right before it, the big thing, you know, where you're moving to the next level, then you just go back and like, it all falls apart. And you have to start over. Yep. That was me with the self destructive artist. That's how I feel like when Tony Stark yep. took away Spider Man, it's about getting you sue because you're being a dumbass or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. How could that show? Like for me, same with the self-destructive thing, I'd always push things a little too far and make it pop. Yeah. 
I couldn't resonate with success. But the plus side with my character is that I didn't like being a bottom self-destructive artist. I like to build something up and then pop it. So it did also inspire me to achieve a certain amount of success, to build something to a certain level in order to destroy it, just for the sake of destroying it. You know? Um, there's some other ones too where you might identify as like the lone wolf hero, similar to kind of like James Bond, and then like you never, um, you kind of sacrifice yourself, like you have the option of say having that relationship with someone, and you might like push that person away as a way of saving them. You're like, for the greater good, I'm the martyr. And then you have that sense of significance or importance of being that. And then you might be frustrated, like, why the fuck don't I have relationships? Because it goes against the character you identify with. So once more, what movie character are you? And I really recommend writing this down. It forces you to be clear and precise about it. And the last question you have to ask yourself here is what is the payoff of being this character? What do I get out of it? And what's the fear of letting go of this character? What's the fear of dropping this identity? And then you must let go of that. And when you do, you will stop being constricted. There will no longer be this invisible force pulling you back and you will be fucking free and things will keep getting better and better and better. Okay, so this is the truth about self-sabotage. And if you wanna go even deeper on this and learn exactly how to let go of it, I created a program called Transformation Mastery. I'll put the link here below, click on it, check the preview videos, and I hope to see you on the other side, transformed and fucking free. Until next time. This is Julian, and welcome to Transformation Mastery. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest happiness I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level. Okay, be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after.